Hi guys, I just want to start out and if you guys don't want to hear this whole spiel in the beginning, you can skip ahead to this time, right? Um, okay. Um, stop. Anyway. I'm sorry I haven't uploaded in a while. I've been wanting to do this video for a while. I wanted to upload it March 5th, actually. I tried filming, it didn't turn out how I wanted, and then I had a pretty bad car accident on Friday. So, done with the excuses. If you hear my dogs barking every now and then, they do that, and I'm sorry. I'll try and cut it out as much as possible. I hope that's not too distracting. Also, I am so sorry the lighting is so poor and I don't have a good background. It's the first time I'm filming a sit-down video, so I'll figure it all out eventually. But I want to do a few different things on my channel, not just vlogs, but I want to do uh, missing people in New Jersey because I've noticed with a lot of unsolved mystery cases, um, not a lot of YouTubers that do them cover people in New Jersey just for the reason that there's never a lot of information for some reason like new jersey seems to be very secretive and very quiet about crimes that happen here such as like kidnappings and murders and stuff so it's extremely hard to find information but i came across this case a couple of years ago and ever since i saw it i've been super interested in it and it's just really sparked my interest it's the longest missing persons case in new jersey of a child under five so this happened in 1962 on december 17th and this little boy was named william Beard. hi guys i just want to start out and if you guys don't want to hear this whole spiel in the beginning you can skip ahead to this time right <coughs> um Okay. Um, stop. Anyway, I'm sorry I haven't uploaded in a while. I've been wanting to do this video for a while. I wanted to upload it March 5th, actually. I tried filming, it didn't turn out how I wanted, and then I had a pretty bad car accident on Friday. So done with the excuses if you hear my dogs barking every now and then they do that and i'm sorry i'll try and cut it out as much as possible i hope that's not too distracting also i am so sorry the lighting is so poor and i don't have a good background it's the first time i'm filming a sit down video so i'll figure it all out eventually but i want to do a few different things on my channel not just vlogs but i want to do uh missing people in new jersey because i've noticed with a lot of unsolved mystery cases um not a lot of youtubers that do them cover people in new jersey just for the reason that there's never a lot of information for some reason like new jersey seems to be very secretive and very quiet about crimes that happen here such as like kidnappings and murders and stuff so it's extremely hard to find information but i came across this case a couple of years ago and ever since i saw it i've been super interested in it and it's just really sparked my interest. It's the longest missing persons case in New Jersey of a child under five. So this happened in 1962 on December 17th and this little boy was named William Billy. Ebenezer Jones III. He was born March 5th, 1959. He had light brown blonde hair, so like dirty blonde hair blue eyes he was three foot six and 35 pounds at the time of his disappearance and he was a caucasian boy so he went missing on december 17th 1962 from his home in vinland new jersey where he lived at 302 taylor Ave. um he also had a vaccination scar on the back of his left arm between his shoulder and his elbow so probably like right about here and it was shaped like a giraffe at the time of his disappearance billy had lived with his mother evelyn his father whose name i 
had a lot of trouble finding so if anybody watches this that does know it you could leave it in the description and well actually duh his name is probably billy william anyway sorry about that so he lived with his mother evelyn his father william his little sister jill who was two at the time and his little brother bart who was one years old at the time he also he loved dogs and would do absolutely anything for dogs um his parents had actually just gotten him a dog for an early christmas gift i believe it was a jack russell terrier uh and it was an early christmas gift for him they got it for him like a couple of weeks before his disappearance and the morning of his disappearance he was last seen in his neighbor's yard at around 11 45 a.m he was outside playing with his little sister jill and his new dog they were playing outside together and his mom was watching them from the kitchen window as she made jill and billy lunch she had stepped away for a minute to go check on their little brother bart who again was one years old at the time and while she was gone billy went missing a neighbor in the area had told them that it was about time to go home now at around the same time and that was the last he was seen mom said when she came back jill had knocked on the door and she opened the door and joe was holding a little plastic poinsettia in her hand and said and when evelyn had asked where did you get that joe responded with billy gave me this flower the boogeyman took him of course mom panicked at this and she told all the neighbors got all the neighbors involved the neighbors all searched and they searched for an hour before contacting police so they contacted they contacted the police at around one o'clock and the police searched the area as well. They searched the woods, creeks, and they also searched a place called the Palace of Depression. Which was about 0.6 miles from Billy's home, and it's about a three minute drive. However, that's taking the roads. I've noticed in Google Maps that there is a little pathway, not a pathway, however, you could cut through the woods and get to the Palace of Depression, and it seemed to be right behind Billy's home. So, they dug up the grounds of the Palace of Depression, and they did not find anything. The reason they did this is because George Daner, who built the Palace of Depression, he built it, and it was completed on Christmas Day in 1932. He said that he was guided to New Jersey by angels who provided the layout, the design of this palace. And they checked this because George Daner was a publicity hog. And on July 4th, 1956, a little boy named Peter Weinberger went missing. He called the police, falsely reporting that um, those involved in this little boy's disappearance had visited his palace. Because it was a false report, he was promptly arrested and spent a year in prison. So he passed away in 1964 to 104 years old. So I just want to put something out that it was highly unlikely he was involved in this because he would have been 102 at the time. And... Five years later, the palace burnt down in 1969. However, they do have a memorial up for the palace now in the same place that it was. I don't know if they're still building it or what. Um, I live in North Jersey. Finland is in very South Jersey, so I've never been there before. I really don't know much about the area. If anybody does, of course, let me know. Um, so they didn't find him there. They found nothing about him and Jill Jones Billy's little sister was hypnotized a couple of years ago I believe it was in 2012 she was hypnotized and she recalls holding Billy's hand and being in front of the palace of depression they saw two men arguing in front of an oil barrel and the next thing she remembers is running and seeing her front door and then having the conversation with her mom and that's it that's all the information she provided um i don't know i didn't read 
I don't know if they released it or not. I don't know if she remembers, but there was no description about what these two men looked like. To my knowledge, nobody's ever spoken up and said they were these two people. However, to be fair, um, if they weren't involved, I don't see how they could remember an argument that took place in 1962. Um, it was 50 years ago at the time she was hypnotized. Uh, I don't remember every argument I've had with people. Um, then again, if they were involved, that also explains why they wouldn't speak up. However, I don't believe they were involved, and I don't think Joe believes they were involved either. I believe that he was taken by a family that just wanted to raise a kid, that couldn't have kids, that lost their kid, and they just wanted to replace a child. Um, which brings me to the point that over the years since he's gone missing, there have been a lot of calls in about sightings of Billy over the country. However, none of these tips ever led to anything. It never led to any information about Billy. It never led to any address or any, like, real sightings of Billy. So he hopefully is still out there. He is still missing. But a few months later from the date that he went missing, which again was on December 17th, 1962, a few months later on March 17th, 1963, a boy named Charles Burgess Jr. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, so I apologize. He went missing from his hometown in Cinnamon Sin, New Jersey. And what's interesting about this is the FBI does believe that these two cases are very related. Cinnamon Sin is about two and a half hours from Vinland, New Jersey. It's, um, it's about a two and a half hour drive. And Cinnamon Sin is extremely close to Philadelphia. So, I couldn't find much information about this. What's interesting is that on the New Jersey State Police site, they do have um, a page of missing people that still haven't been found. And the oldest one on there is Billy's disappearance. However, this boy is not on there. From web sleuths that I saw this case that is supposedly connected, as I was reading up on Billy, in 2014, they supposedly said he still was not found. So, I'm not sure if he's been found in these next four years. I never found an article about it. And I would assume somebody missing from the 60s found after 2014, New Jersey would have reported on it. But we don't have a historical database um, for newspapers. You would have to go to, like, your local town hall to get all that information. It's pretty frustrating, but... I, re I couldn't find anything about him online. I only saw the two articles that were linked on web sleuths, and they were old articles. I'm not sure how the person who linked them found them, but I am thankful for them. And in them, I read that a woman had reportedly called and said she had Charles and told the parents to meet her at a specific location in Philadelphia. The parents went there, and... A woman reportedly called and said she had the boy and told the parents to meet her at a specific location in Philly or she would cut the boy into pieces. The parents went there and this woman just never arrived. They sat there and they waited and she just never showed up. And a few days later, she called again stating the same instructions. And the parents this time told her, well, we have a reward out for the safe return of our boy are you like we'll give you the money please just give him back and she stated I'm not interested in the money I'm just interested in doing what is right which at first I thought that was weird like why would she threaten to kill him if she wanted to just do what was right and return him however that got me thinking that maybe she just knew whoever took him and she knew the people that took him were going to harm him. And she was trying to sneak him out before that. She and the reason she never showed up was because she could never successfully 
sneak him out. And I really do wonder if that was the case, um, cause that makes sense to me. Uh, if it was a family that just took a boy to raise him as their own, I don't see why they would harm him. However, again, this could have just been some woman pulling a prank and calling to just mess with the parents, but back in the 60s, it's kind of difficult to determine that. I mean, like, what's going on and stuff, and like, the parents' phone number, and all that interesting stuff, but for both these cases, there were flyers and information put out all over the country, and including Canada, um, Billy definitely has still not been found, however, I'm not sure about Charles, the FBI does think, again, these two cases are related, um, and that's really all the information I have on either of these cases, um, Jill is the only family member left of Billy, unfortunately, both his parents and his little brother Bart have passed away, so, Billy is all Jill has left if he is still alive. So, if anybody knows anything, or Billy, if you do stumble upon this video for some unknown reason, Jill misses you a lot, and it would mean the world to her to have you back in her life. Um, so again, if anybody knows anything, I will leave a number and a link down in the description of people you can contact. You can always leave anonymous tips, um, you never have to admit who you are, and just bring Billy home. Bring Billy home to his sister. She's lived basically her whole life without him, and they were extremely, extremely close. Um, also, at the time of his disappearance, he did have a speech impediment. He had a hard time speaking, a hard time forming sentences together, and saying specific words, so that might also be pretty important in this case if anybody does remember seeing him and, or seeing a little boy that fits this description and that speech impediment just makes you go, oh yeah, I do remember this little boy. He was seen at this place at this time and that's just, that's a tip the police could use whether it was in 1962 on December 18th and he was seen in Ohio at a gas station getting gas like just as important so again thank you for watching I do know this video was short I still can't make my videos longer than 15 minutes um however with your support I can I can put better videos together and longer videos with more detail if I can find it I really do want to do, like, unsolved crimes in New Jersey because they don't seem to get a lot of coverage, even from New Jersey, like, the media in New Jersey and all of that, and I don't know why, it's a little weird, but thank you for watching. Again, if you know anything, please let me know, let the police know. I'll leave everything in the description. I'm sorry, I don't know why that's happening. I'll leave everything in the description, and have a great day. Don't forget to bloom.